what will you need for this course? First of all, you'll need to have installed on your computer Flutter. To do that, you can head to flutter.dev, go to the Get Started link, and choose the guide appropriate to your operating system. Now be aware, this course is going to be a lot more useful to you if you are familiar with Flutter, have built a number of apps with it. If so, you're in exactly the right place. It's going to be a great course and a great learning experience for you. However, if you're totally new to the framework and haven't built anything with it yet, it's going to be, number one, a lot more difficult, and number two, you're going to not get as much out of it. And that's because we're not going to be covering all of the fundamentals. That's going to be assumed. We're going to be covering a lot more medium and advanced range topics, showing you how to build impressive production-ready apps. So just be aware of the difficulty involved. If you do want to get started from scratch, want to jump into the deep end, head to flutter.dev. And what you'll need to do to confirm that you have Flutter installed correctly, and this applies to everyone, is you'll need to run Flutter Doctor and see in the doctor summary in the output that number one, all of the boxes are checked and that you have no issues found. Once that's the case, you can move on to the next step. And by the way, flutter.dev is a great resource to use if you're looking for a guide to brush up on the fundamentals of Flutter. You can see here there are a number of guides if you're coming from a technology like Android or iOS, React Native, if you're a web developer. So be sure to check that out. As for the code editor that we'll be using, I'd recommend you use Visual Studio Code. You can get that at code.visualstudio.com. And the main reason for that is it comes with a number of extensions that are going to make development, developing our Flutter apps a lot easier that I'm going to show you in just a second. As for our authentication service and database, we're going to be using Firebase. So to use Firebase, you'll need to have a Google account. I'd recommend you have a couple of accounts since we're going to be signing into multiple accounts within our app to simulate multiple users. So once you have a Google account, you can head to firebase.google.com and from there, you can go to your console. Now for our Firebase project, we're going to be using the free tier so it'll be entirely free to use. Now once you have Visual Studio Code, you can bring in those extensions I mentioned by, once you've got that opened, going to view up at the top and opening the extensions tab by going to extensions. And we're going to search in the marketplace first for the Flutter extension. And we'll select the first one that comes up and you'll want to install it. Now the main benefit of this is it's going to make development a lot easier through hot code reloading. As you can kind of see a demo here, I'm going to show you how to use this in detail in the next step as compared to using the more cumbersome CLI, Flutter CLI. So it's going to be a big help in our development process. The next extension I'd recommend you bring in is a snippets extension called Awesome Flutter Snippets. So if you're not familiar with snippets, they basically enable us to write a shortcut, write in a, an abbreviated version of some piece of code that we want to write out, and then hit tab and then expand that. So for example, we see here, once we go to Awesome Flutter Snippets and install it, we see in the guide that there's this shortcut stateless w that enables us to create an entire stateless widget. And you see a number of other ones here too. So to demo this, we can just go to any Dart file. So if we want to make a stateless widget in this file, we could just say stateless w, that's the abbreviation, and then hit tab. And then we have all seven lines of code or eight lines of code that that takes up. We didn't have to write all that. We could also write a stateful widget with that abbreviation or a build function. There are a ton of different shortcuts that you can make use of, so be sure to check that out. And in the next video, we'll take a look at how to use the Flutter Visual Studio Code extension. One last note before we wrap up this video is I want to show you a feature that's going to save you a lot of typing throughout the course. That is the auto import feature. So say I want to use something from a given package in one of my Dart files. And in my case, that's Firebase Messaging. If I want to use it, I'll need to import the Firebase Messaging package up at the top of the file. And you see here on the right-hand side of my code suggestion that I have an auto import suggestion. So if I just click on this or hit tab, you'll see up at the top that this import statement for the package that I need was automatically added. So we don't have to write these import statements out. That's thanks to 
the auto import feature in VS Code once we have our Flutter VS Code extension installed. And to make sure that this is set up correctly, you can go to Code, Preferences, Settings, and then search for Auto Import Dart. And you'll just need to make sure that Auto Import Completions, that this value is checked.